Hi, my name is Kate Sanborn, and this is my presentation on my project, Air Flute, a virtual flute and tutoring system. With this project, I created a virtual instrument that users can play by moving their hands in the air. It also provides them basic music education and allows them to try it out with the virtual instrument. Some of the motivation behind my project came from the many challenges that are affecting music education today. For instance, a lot of music education programs are receiving limited funding. Not all students have enough money to afford their own instrument or lessons to improve their skills on that instrument. Also, in a pandemic, it's very difficult to play instruments that students blow into. That spreads a lot of germs. And some of the cost issues that music education has used to be solved by sharing instruments, but that's not as doable right now when there are health concerns. Also, students in rural areas or maybe just areas where there aren't a lot of music teachers may not have access to learning about music education. However, with this project, more students will be able to have access to education that doesn't need a teacher and it's also a lot more inexpensive than a typical physical instrument would be. Some of the main components of air flute. The leap motion controller is the most important part of the project. It is a small device that can read hand movements and gives you output based on that. I used JavaScript to take in the input from the leap motion controller and then created my project on an HTML page based on the input from the leap motion device. As you can see, the leap motion controller, when you use it, requires both of your palms to be facing away from your body. However, with the flute, your left palm is actually supposed to be facing towards your body. So when you're using air flute, you will have to make that slide adjustment by rotating your left hand out. The fingerings on the air flute match the visual like this. So you can see your left hand does have to be rotated like I mentioned, and your right hand stays like that. Your thumb is one, index two, and then down like that. And same on the right hand, your index is two, then three for your middle and down. As you can see also, the right hand thumb does not have a number. That is because on a physical flute, that finger does not press any keys. So for the air flute, the thumb is not pressing any keys either. In air flute, there are several features. The three main features are free play, learning notes, and practicing exercises. In free play, users can practice however they want. There's no given music or notes. It's just a place for students to have fun and try out what they've learned. In learning notes, it teaches individual notes and the fingerings for those. And then once students have learned the notes, they can move into practicing exercises but that will give them a piece of music and allow them to try it and then provide feedback based on how well they do. This is what the free play looks like. You click this button to begin the flute audio, and then you can see on the visual on the right how your fingers are moving and what keys the air flute recognizes that you are pressing. This is the learning notes feature of the air flute. You click the button in the top left, it generates a random note for you to try. You can see if you get it correct, it gives you this message below for 50% accuracy or greater on more than 200 frames or captures of leap motion data. And then here, if you get it wrong, gives you this message at the bottom for less than 50% accuracy on 500 frames. And then it shows you the correct fingering up here in blue on the visual. Now I'm going to demonstrate the exercises feature. This allows you to play different pieces of music and receive feedback on what notes you missed and how you can improve for next time. This is the exercises feature of Airflute. In this part of the program, users can perform different exercises and the Airflute will provide them feedback on which notes they missed and how they did overall and allow them to listen to their performance. To start, I click this button to start the flute audio and this button to start the metronome sound. I can adjust the speed of the metronome here based on if I want to practice the exercise faster or slower. 
And then right here, I choose which exercise I want to practice. For now, I'm going to choose exercise two. This button allows me to listen to exercise two and see what it should sound like when I play it. And so now that I know what it's supposed to sound like, I can click here to record my attempt and then receive feedback on which notes I missed and how I did overall. Right here, you'll see numbers popping up. That's the metronome indicating what beat I should be on. And it will also give me four beats to count in and prepare. So now that I'm done, I can click here to see my results. As you can see, I missed number 5 and 8 so that you could see what the incorrect fingering would show up. So if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, I missed this note. We can see that the correct fingering is 1, 3, 4, and then 2, 3, 4. So that means 1 on the left hand and 3 and 4 also on the left hand. So thumb, middle, and ring. And then on the right hand, it should be 2, 3, and 4, or index middle and ring. I click OK, and then it shows me my overall percentage correct right here, and I can listen to my results. And then now that I've seen how well I've done and I know where I need to improve, I can click here to reset the exercise and start over and try again to improve my score. So outside of that demo, there are several more exercises. And with all of those, students will learn a variety of rhythms, notes, and time signatures so that they're really prepared to start learning more music. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about how the air flute works. To determine whether or not a key is pressed, I used the dot product between the direction the finger is pointing and the hand direction. If this dot product is within the correct range, the air flute recognizes that the finger is bent, and then it presses the virtual key. With the correct keys pressed, it produces the correct volume and frequency for the air flute. And this code and the graphic on the right were inspired by the code from the link on the slides. It was very important to include a metronome with the exercises featured air flute. With the metronome, students can adjust the speed that they practice the exercises. Maybe when they're just learning it, they'd start out at a slower tempo. But as they get more comfortable, they can move into a faster tempo. The metronome is also really important because it syncs what the air flute is grading and what the student is playing. For instance, if the air flute is grading beat one, but the student thinks that they should be on beat three, they will get inaccurate scores. The metronome makes this clear exactly which note the student should be on. To create the metronome, I have a sliding bar that provides input on how fast or how slow the student wants the piece to be played. This input goes to calculate a number of frames per beat. This is the number of captures that the leap motion does for every beat of the piece. For the first five frames, 
the air flute plays a tone to represent the metronome so that students can audibly hear what beat they're supposed to be on. And if the user removes their hands, the metronome stops and it is no longer recording their progress. While this does mean that the tempo will not be constant while the student is performing the exercise, it also prevents students from being penalized for potentially moving their hands outside of the range of the Leap Motion Controller or losing track of one of their hands. I used a three-dimensional array to store values in the exercises feature of the air flute. The first part of the 3D array represents the selected exercise that the student is attempting, so right now it'd be 1 through 5. The frame number represents the number of frames since the beginning of when the student started recording, and that's basically just the unit of time. And then the value represents whatever value needs to be stored at that time. Maybe it's what fingers were actually pressed, what fingers should have been pressed, what volume the student's playing at, or maybe the output frequency. In conclusion, there are several benefits and limitations of the air flute. It does provide a really good introduction to basic music reading and how to play. You can learn basic flute fingerings that match those that are, you would actually play on a physical flute. It's a touch-free and germ-free instrument. It would provide easy virtual and online learning during a pandemic when access to physical teachers is limited. It's much less expensive than a physical flute, and it's a lot quieter than a physical flute too. If you put in headphones, nobody around you can hear it. There are some limitations too. It does not teach breathing, so once you've learned everything that you need to know from air flute, you would still only have about half of what you need to play the physical flute. It does not include notes at the extreme end of the flute range because those require alternate fingerings and pressing multiple keys, which is not something that I included with the air flute. However, for beginning students, you don't really need to pick up these extreme ends of the range, those notes, so I did not think it was necessary to include those. Also, it relies on the accuracy of the leap motion controller, and so if that is not picking up your hands correctly, then you cannot learn very well with this program. Moving forward, I'd like to potentially add other types of flutes, maybe air contrabass flute or air piccolo. For instance, if you look at the right picture, that's a contrabass flute. Those are several thousands of dollars, and many flute students may not get the opportunity to play that kind of thing, and they may not have the ability to play music written specifically for contrabass flutes. However, with the air flute, they could at least get some sort of experience trying out those more fun <laughs> instruments. Also, this program would be very easy to implement on other woodwind instruments, such as the clarinet or the oboe. I'd like to add more exercises to expand the range of skills that this teaches students. I'd like to add scales and arpeggios because those are fundamentals for any music that you need to learn. And then possibly adding info about theory or how one would use air with a physical instrument. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed watching my presentation on air flute, a virtual flute, and tutoring system.